a Finnish student who has an affair with a professor studies language in Moscow. She is interested in archaeology, rock paintings, especially that one discovered in Murmansk, thousands of years old. She insists on seeing that petroglyph, but it's hard to go there and for a Finnish who can't speak Russian fluently is even harder. However, a strong, strange appetite for past make her go. At the beginning of her journey by train, she probably doesn't know something stronger and strange awaits for her in the compartment number six. A sincere love of her boorish, drunk compartment mate. You are a bullet head, seemingly tough guy is a unique character we've never experienced before. We can't stand his abusive behavior at first, but gradually his kindness is revealed. The jokes and the way he tells them are absolutely funny. Slowly we can understand him, and more notably we don't understand exactly when our hate for him turns into a sense of understanding. I really liked him, and could relate to him despite my initial unsatisfying feelings. Compartment number 6 is a journey to past, to signs belonging to past, which illuminate our present. Lara, inquisitive girl, is excited about that rock carvings and never wants to lose the chance of getting a glimpse on that historical gifts. But what's the main feature of the past? I agree that we can name a specific feature. There are more than one, but we can certainly name simplicity as one of them. As our present is becoming more complex every day, the past remains simple in contrast. Lara's journey is a travel through time, from present to past, from complexity to simplicity, from glorious wallpapers in Irina's flat to simple plain drawings on rocks, from recording scenes with camera to just watching them with eyes, as Lara did after her camera was stolen. It's also a kind of spiritual journey from hypocrisy to honesty. We can easily discern hypocritical attitudes of two characters. Irina, Lara's lover, shows indifference to Lara's troubles through travel of the phone despite her seeming former love. Second, when Lara invites a Finnish lost man to her compartment who seems polite and modest. Despite that, we later understand he is a thief. In contrast of these two, we have Yoha, who is open-hearted, gentle, good-humored and friendly. Lara passed the pretense and reached the true fondness of Yua. Remember the opening party scene where some attendees are playing quotation game. There is a relevant quotation from Victor Palavin. To escape, you needed to know not where you are running, but from where. Above all, this is a love story being narrated in the situation that we never expect to consist of love. Two completely different characters with their almost opposite words are becoming interested in each other. Prejudices against Yuha take Lara away from him at first. Although through travel she discovers Yuha's intimacy and supports. At the last scene they are both on the train, Lara is the one who first kisses. Adopted from a well-known novel by Rosa Lixon with the same name awarded Green Prix at the 2021 Cannes Film Festival, easily propel you to watch this movie. Your prejudices are challenged, and that's a great opportunity for us to rethink how we think about others. Rosa Lixon's novel is about the last decade of the Soviet Union, although it seems the movie's era is sometime in the 90s, by referring to Titanic movie and knowing that the Merman's petroglyphs were discovered in 1997. We find out the time is the late 90s, but it still seems inconsistent with the end of 90s that there is a payphone at the train station and no one has mobile phone. A little flow can be neglected. I should avoid repeating, but at the end, again, I want to confess I absolutely was fascinated by Yuha. Maybe you will be too. Thanks for watching.